Hello and welcome to this video where you'll learn how to clone any voice so that you can make it say anything by using text to speech. Would you believe me if I told you that I'm not a human voice and that it's actually quite easy to train and use a voice model yourself? I would like to walk you through the process from start to finish. This includes following five main steps. First, we will install all pre-requirements. Then we will install Tortoise TTS the easy way, and that is by using the AI voice cloning package. We will then prepare our input voice so that we can train the model afterwards. Finally, we'll then be able to actually use the model. As a quick note, this tutorial is for English voices only. NVIDIA graphics cards and Windows 11 are required. And we will only focus on speaking and not singing. And if you are looking for a way to use your own voice to control an AI voice instead of using text-to-speech, then check out this video. So let's get started right away by installing all the pre-requirements. Python. Git, the CUDA toolkit, and FFmpeg. You can use the wiki that you see on screen as a reference. However, we won't always be doing exactly as it says. For example, we have an easier way to install Python, and that is through the Windows Store. So we open the store and search for Python. You can now install either Python 3.9 or, like in my case, Python 3.10. If you want to, you can now test if Python has installed correctly. You do so by hitting the Windows key and open a command prompt by entering CMD. Then enter the word Python and you should get a similar message as you see here. Now we open the link for Git and download the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Then we run the installer and install the tool with the default settings. You'll need to click Next a lot if you want you can check if the installation went through as it should have by opening a command prompt again and by entering the word git, unless you get a message saying the command git wasn't found. You are good to go. Next is the CUDA toolkit for which there is another link in the video description that we open. It takes us to a download center where we need to select a few self-explanatory things before we get to download the installer. We run the installer and don't change any of the default settings. We can deselect the last two options, though. A quick way to find out if the toolkit is installed is by searching the list of installed apps. You can find the list by right-clicking on the Windows icon and then selecting Installed Apps. If you type CUDA in the search bar and you can see some entries, then that means the CUDA toolkit has been installed correctly. To install FFmpeg, we open the link, click on the Windows logo, and then on the second option for the Windows executables. On the Git, we scroll down to the files that have Win64 in the name and download either of them. We then unpack the downloaded zip archive. In the extracted files, we navigate to the folder called bin. We copy that folder and paste it somewhere, such as in the root of our main disk. The downloaded files can all be deleted now. Now we navigate to the bin folder and rename it to FF and PEG. Also, we copy the folder path through Windows Explorer. Next, we hit the Windows key and type in ENB. This should show the settings to edit the system environment variables. Open it and then click on Environment Variables. Under the System Variables, click on Path and then on Edit. In this window, you need to click on New and then paste the path to your FFmpeg folder. 
click on OK in both open settings windows and you're done installing FFmpeg. If you want to check and see if it worked, open a command window and type in FFmpeg. You should be seeing the same message as on screen now. Now that we have made sure that we fulfilled all pre-requirements, we can start installing Tortoise TTS. And we do so by navigating to a folder where we want to install Tortoise. Then in Windows Explorer, click on the address path and type in CMD to open a command window in the current path. We go to the wiki and copy the command to clone the git. We then run this command in the command window. Now we navigate to the new folder in the command window by typing cd followed by the name of the folder. Back in the wiki, we copy the command to set up everything for NVIDIA graphics cards. This is going to take a couple of minutes to finish. Once it's done, we launch the web user interface by typing start.bat. When you launch it for the first time, it will download a bunch of files. When it's done, you can scroll up to find the URL and hold control while clicking on it. This should then open the user interface in your web browser. You can now enter a simple prompt to see if everything works as it should. When you click on Generate, it will download some more files. You might get some error messages in the command window like you see here, but it's nothing to worry about as long as generating the voices works. When you go back to the user interface, you should be able to see and hear the result of our prompt. How does this sound? This means the tool is working, and we can almost start with the training. But first, we have to prepare the file with the voice that we want to train. Here you see our input voice, which is coming from a video clip. That led both sides, both we're doing throughout this period, officially part of the record in, that, uh, in the revolution. The fact that it's a video means that we need to extract the audio first. And we can do that with a free tool called Audacity. In case you use it for the first time, you have to make sure that it can locate FFmpeg. If it cannot locate it by itself, you'll need to point it towards the folder that you installed it to. So for our video file, we can just drag and drop that into the tool. We only want to have voices in our training data. So if your video has some background noises, or if you want to isolate a voice from music, then there's other software that can do that for you. Since our video only has music playing at the beginning, we highlight that part and go to edit, and then delete. We also cut anything that's beyond the 10 minute mark. Tortoise is said to work well with smaller voice samples as input data, so you can go lower than 10 minutes. However, for me, having around 10 minutes of input voice always worked great so far, so I'll stick to it. Once we exported the file as WAV, we can delete the video. Next, we cut the WAV file, navigate to the Voices folder in the AI voice cloning folder. There, we create a new folder and name it after the voice we want to train. We'll call it Lecturer, and in this folder, we'll paste the WAV file. To train the model, we go back to the web interface and refresh the voice list. Now we switch to the training tab where we can select the data set source that we created. Then we click on transcribe and process, which will transcribe and split our input audio file. This should only take a minute or so. Next we go to the tab called generate configuration. Here you could change the amount of epics to be used. For my 10 minute input files, 500 epics has always worked fine. So I'll leave it at 500. If you have smaller input files, then try lowering the amount of epics. We scroll down and set the save frequency as well as the validation frequency, both to a value of 100. This means throughout the training process of the 500 epics, the tool will save the model five times and also run the validation five times. We 
then refresh the data set list and select our data set of the lecturer. Now we scroll up to the top of the page and click on validate training configuration. The tool will automatically adjust some values of your configuration and you can then click on save training configuration. Then we'll switch to the run training tab and click on refresh configurations, which now lets us select the configuration from the drop down list, the configuration that we created on the previous tab. This means we can finally start the actual training process by clicking on train. This is going to take a long while depending on how powerful your graphics card is. So get some coffee and ignore the warnings in the command window or any inconsistencies in the progress window or in the graphs. As long as the text in the command window is still moving along, you should be good. Now let's try out the model by going into settings and switching the autoregressive model to the one with the highest number. In our case, that's 501. That means it is the last model that was saved after running the 500 epics. Make sure to click on refresh model list if you don't see your models in the drop down list. You may want to try out the other ones if you're not happy with the results of the 501 model. Now we go back to the generate tab refresh the voice list so that we then can select the voice of the lecturer from the list. So let's enter a prompt and click on generate to finally hear what the model sounds like. When you run a voice model for the first time, generating will take a bit longer. Wow, that took quite a while to finish. Was it worth it? You can also play around with the different presets. Notice how the parameters change when selecting a preset. Here's a quick overview of how they sound and how long they take to execute. This sentence was generated with the ultra fast preset. Can you hear a difference? This sentence was generated with the fast preset. Can you hear a difference? This sentence was generated with the standard preset. Can you hear a difference? This sentence was generated with a high quality preset. Can you hear a difference? Wow, calm down. So I guess high quality does not always give the best result then. And another important lesson to learn here is that once you find a seed that works well with a voice, write it down somewhere so you can keep using it. By default, the seed changes with each generation. Here's a few different sentences with only the seeds being different. This is the same sentence with the same setting, but always using a different seed. It sounds like the seed can have a huge impact on the quality of a generated sentence. Now let's try some different emotions, but don't get your hopes up. This seems to heavily depend on the quality of the training data. Since our data is that of a very neutral way of speaking, we will not be getting any great results from it. Or does this sound angry to you? Or does this sound sad to you? Or does this sound disgusted to you? Or does this sound arrogant to you? Or does this sound happy to you? Okay, I'd say that sounds a bit more mechanical than without any emotions selected. And with that said, I'll hand it over to the AI voice tutor for some closing remarks. Hey guys, so here's a quick summary. First, some tips. Always note down good seeds. I have found a way for the tool to write them automatically along with the output files. Also, I've had much better results when I gave it short sentences compared to long ones or even entire paragraphs. And as you could hear, this method is very good. It's not quite perfect, but still very powerful. So I hope you use it responsibly. And the results for me have been very inconsistent. So even sticking to good seats and using higher presets, I encountered some bugs. This might also be caused by not having perfect training data, but check out some bugs that I encountered. Data set source that we created. Then we click on transcribe and process, which will transcribe and process, which will transcribe and split our input audio file. Parameters change when selecting a preset. 
Here's a quick overview of how they have a huge impact on the quality of a generated sentence. Huge impact on the quality of a generated sentence. So, wow, calm down. So I guess not high. always give the best result then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and another important lesson to learn here is that... So I already started working on my next video with my regular AI voice, the one that you hear right now. But for the future, it would be great to know what you guys think. Should I make more videos with a text-to-speech voice? Should I maybe try to make a better one? Or should I just stick to my current AI voice that I control with my own voice? Please let me know in the comments and thank you so much for all the support so far. I really appreciate it. And if you learned something new in this video, please give me a like or subscribe and I'll see you next time.